The cubital or anticubital fossa is a triangular space on the anterior surface of the elbow. Its boundaries are formed by two muscles of the forearm. These muscles arise above the elbow joint and they are the brachioradialis on the lateral side. This is the brachioradialis muscle which makes the lateral boundary. And the other muscle on the medial side is the pronator teres muscle. The two muscles converge together at the apex of the triangle and the base of the triangle is an imaginary line that passes between the epicondyles of the humerus. Here you can see the distal end of the humerus and here is the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and here is the more prominent medial epicondyle of the humerus and there is an imaginary line in between them that forms the base of the triangle of the cubital fossa. The cubital fossa contains the following structures enumerated from medial to lateral. It contains the median nerve, the brachial artery, and it will bifurcate in the fossa into its uh, two terminal branches, the radial and ulnar arteries, then the tendon of biceps brachii muscle, and then lateral to that is the radial nerve and its deep branch, which are not shown here in this specimen. In this dissection, you can see these structures. Uh, this is the median nerve, then the brachial artery, and then the tendon of biceps. Actually, two of the structures you don't need to memorize because in the examination you can palpate your own, which is the tendon of biceps, can be felt in the middle of the fossa, and medial to it you can feel the pulsations of your own brachial artery. In the upper limb, as in the lower limb, the venous drainage is by the way of superficial and deep veins. The deep veins are in the form of veni comitants, which accompany the arteries, and they eventually drain into the brachial veins, which in turn join the basilic vein to form the axillary vein. There is a superficial system of veins, as we can see it here, that is located in the superficial fascia, and this superficial system of veins commences in a dorsal venous arch on the dorsum of the hand. This is the dorsal venous arch that is located in the dorsum of the hand. Here is the thumb side, the radial side of the upper limb, the lateral side. And so a, a vein leaves each side of the dorsal venous arch. The basilic vein arises from the medial side of the dorsal venous arch and continues on the medial side of the forearm, medial side of the cubital fossa, and then the vein continues on the medial side of the arm where it dips into the deep fascia and joins the vena comitants of the brachial artery to form the axillary vein. From the lateral side of the dorsal venous arch, the vein that arises is called the cephalic vein, also passes on the lateral side of the forearm, lateral side of the cubital fossa, but this vein continues to the root of the limb where it passes into the deltopectoral groove and opens into the axillary vein, which is the deep vein in the upper limb. So here is the vena comitants of the brachial artery. They join the basilic vein to form the axillary vein, and then the axillary vein will receive the cephalic vein, and it will continue as the subclavian vein. The two superficial veins are joined by a median cubital vein over the cubital fossa. This median cubital vein carries much of the blood from the cephalic vein to the basilic vein. It has a deep communication with the deep veins in the fossa, but the vein itself, the median cubital vein, passes in the roof of the cubital fossa. Here we can see the cephalic vein on the lateral side of the forearm, lateral side of the cubital fossa, and lateral side of the arm. And here is the basilic vein, and that is the communication in between them, which is the median cubital vein. And the arrangement of the veins here in the roof of the cubital fossa is in the form of an H, a capital H arrangement. In some people, and in the presence of a median vein of the forearm, which drains the front of the wrist and the forearm, this vein, median vein of the forearm, at the roof of the cubital fossa, will divide into a median basilic and a median cephalic vein. 
here you can see that on the lateral side of the fossa is the cephalic vein and it is joined by a median cephalic vein and here is the basilic vein on the medial side of the fossa that is joined by the median basilic vein so the arrangement of the superficial veins in the roof of the cubital fossa is in the form of a capital m the roof of the cubital fossa as you can see here is formed by superficial fascia and by the deep fascia in the superficial fascia lies the median cubital vein that joins the cephalic and the basilic vein and as you well know that the venous pattern everywhere in the body is variable that's why here sometimes there is a median cephalic and a median basilic veins so the arrangement will be in the form of a capital m instead of being in the form of a capital h arrangement with a median cubital vein forming the horizontal bar of the capital h but always there is a vein in this region that is suitable for intravenous injections or for obtaining a blood sample this vein could be a median cubital vein or it could be any of the median basilic or median cephalic vein in cases of the m-shape arrangement also on the roof of the cubital fossa there are cutaneous nerves of the nerves that we can see here is the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm this is a direct branch from the medial cord of the brachial plexus and on the lateral side there is the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm which is the continuation of the musculocutaneous nerve the deep fascia of the roof of the cubital fossa is strengthened medially by the bicipital aponeurosis the aponeurosis separates the superficial veins particularly the median cubital vein from the brachial artery and the median nerve which are located underneath the bicipital aponeurosis. The bicipital aponeurosis is a medial expansion of biceps tendon and considered as a thickening of the deep fascia, where the biceps tendon partly attaches to the deep fascia of the forearm, but mainly the tendon is attached to the tuberosity of the radius. The fact that the aponeurosis separates between the superficial veins and the underlying median nerve and brachial artery should be borne in mind while doing a venipuncture since a clumsy one pierces the fascia and the artery as well and produces a large expanding hematoma in the old days barber surgeons who were performing the operation of bleeding or phlebotomy were aware of the importance of the bicipital aponeurosis in protecting the brachial artery from their knives and so they termed the aponeurosis Grasa du fascia, which means praise to God.